We are finally going to Eve, guys. We are finally gonna be getting that all the sweet science that we can get from Eve Low and Eve High to be able to advance our scientific knowledge and research. But we, let's take it from the beginning. A couple of episodes ago, we have launched our interplanetary probes. And if you have missed it, I'm gonna post a link to that episode in the card in your top right corner. However, the, these craft needed to stay in the orbit of Kerbin until a suitable transfer window presented itself, as pointed out my Kerbal alarm clock that you can see right above. So right now we are trying to implement that transfer to ensure that we get our probe safely all the way to EVE. And the sharp item among you will notice that there is another maneuver node with, that says Eve Explorer Departure. Well, it's in one year and this one is, the next window is in four minutes. So I really wanted to give it a genuine shot in terms of not waiting a full year and just shooting it off and hopefully getting some science. Then on the next window, I can always launch a second craft, which will then maybe be even be a lander and whatnot. Maybe a remote network and we can figure out later on. So right now, and this is actually one of the first episodes that I'm going to be showing you how to play with remote tech uh, flight computer. If you have not played yet with a remote tech and flight computer and signal delay, because uh, then it will be tricky. So what you can see below the alarm clock is the flight computer and you can schedule your burns and everything in it and it will be executing it. It's really that simple. All that it requires is that you maintain the connectivity back to Kerbin or to a suitable control point. We will come to what the suitable control point is later on, but to be able to send the command. So you don't need to have connectivity at the time when it's executing. You have to have connectivity when you're giving the orders. So it's that simple. So. I've now turned it off. I've turned the SAS on because it's less, I think, energy consuming. And now we will be enjoying as our beautiful probe leaves the Kerbin's sphere of influence. There we go. And bye-bye. Kerbin slowly drifting in the distance as our probe ventures into the interplanetary space followed by its long trip to Duna. Oh, sorry, Eve. Also, one thing worth saying is that this is actually intertwined with the launch of our space station that you saw in the previous episode and the episode before that. So I didn't want to like have multiple parallel stories rather than one consistent whole. So this was also happening, as you can see in the alarm clock, while the Kerbin orbiter has, was being built. Then I have decided to point uh, one of my medium range satellites directly at the EVE Explorer, just to make sure that we have connectivity. Normally, if you point towards the active craft, it should be enough, but I want it to be sure. Also, you will notice that our probe does not have connectivity at the moment, and it doesn't have, and it has just regained it and lost it again. The reason why this is happening is because our remote satellites that have long range communication dishes are in high elliptical orbit and the antenna point is pointing towards Kerbin, not to the specific satellite. So because of that, it can happen that uh, the polar satellite gets out of the sphere of influence or out of the cone of the reception, or it just goes behind Kerbin. So now that we have gotten finally into the interplanetary space, it is time to queue up science. And as you can tell, I am queuing up science with a signal delay of only four seconds. So you see the commands not being executed immediately, but after four seconds, we get the data and then we send transmit. And after that, the data gets transmitted back to Kerbin, for which we will get a healthy amount of science because this is the first probe that has successfully exited the Kerbin sphere of influence. And that, of course, means that we really, really should capitalize on that. So gain all the science that we can. We will toggle back the mag magnetometer boom so that it can perform more experiments at the Eve's sphere of influence. Having said that, as you can tell, there is a significant gap. And as you can tell, 
we will be putting another maneuver node somewhere just before we enter the Duna Sphere of Influence and I want to make sure that I tweak my maneuver so that our periapsis gets very, very close to Duna. So now you will see a lot of me fiddling getting that periapsis down. I'm tweaking the maneuver on the GUI just to make sure that to get that periapsis. I'm hoping to shoot for 120 kilometers approximately to make sure that that periapsis gets really low. Okay, I don't want the litho break, please. Yeah, okay, 15 kilometers. That's a little bit too close to comfort. It would be in the Eve's sphere of influence. Close, close, close. Oh, 126. That's good enough. It will still be above atmosphere, but it will be low above Eve. And that's the goal. So I'm happy with that. I will add the alarm with five minutes of delay so that we have plenty of time to send in the commands and whatnot. And then we will be alerted next time that this happens. And this will be happening in the 51 days. During that period is where the previous episodes that you have seen come in. During that period I have done everything except uh, getting this probe. So as you can see now, we go a little bit ahead of time and Right now we are preparing for that maneuver node because we are getting to that maneuver node. All right. We're closing in. It's going to be happening in three days. So we did a little bit of a time skip here between these two actions. And as you can tell, our signal delay is 15 seconds. So I make sure that I've hold, put the hold maneuver prograde and execute the plan maneuver. It's really important that you have <clears throat> enough Delta V in the current stage because uh, the flight computer will not perform staging or at least not to my knowledge. So yeah. There we go. Throttling back time warp and it's executing the maneuver. All right, perfect, 127 kilometers. So now all that we need to do is to make sure that we get to the Eve's sphere of influence and perform science, ha ha. Okay, so as you can see, 15 seconds is the delay, is the signal delay. So right now what I'm gonna do the following, I'm gonna right now immediately set up a maneuver node. There we go. And then I'm going to queue up that maneuver node for the execution. And I'm going to set up an alarm to basically, you know, wake me up. And that's mainly for my cinematic reasons, because I want to be alerted when it happens. So let's add an alarm first. We say four minutes before the periapsis, let me know. Okay, good. That takes care of the alarm clock. Let's go now back to probe and let's do some experiments. We are in the Eve sphere of influence. We have plenty of electric charge, signal delay is 15 seconds, so let's go. We want a telemetry report, we want to log virtual, ob virtual observations, magnetometer report, GORSAT, and as you can see now, we can do transmit, transmit, transmit and transmit. Good. So now let's queue up the rest of the experiments. We have, I think we haven't gone yet through the thermometer, so let's log the temperature, pressure data, let's go with the gravity data, and also let's get the high and over E. Good. That fixes that problem. Perfect. Transmitting. Wonderful. And then we toggle the magnetometer, boom, back. Okay, so that covers science high. Now what we want to do is we want to get rid of the bottom stage because to be able to circularize around Eve, we will need 1265. And since we cannot stage, or at least I don't know how to make the flight computer stage, uh, yeah, actually it can. Toggle action group stage in 15 seconds. Okay, fair enough. There we go. Oh, and we have the Kraken attack. Oh, wait, come on. Okay. Calm down your balls, son. 
Uh, yeah, okay. Well, reloading the craft apparently fixed the issue before it tore itself to bits. So, uh, right now we should be going towards Eve and hopefully executing. So what I want to do, I want to point the maneuver no prograde and make sure that we can execute the maneuver. So as you can see now, these things will execute in one day, one hour and 47 minutes. So that's kind of important to remember because that's the time when we will be reaching the periapsis. So what was going to happen, I want to queue up now science and I want it to happen at the periapsis. So I'm inputting the exact time to periapsis, which is one day, one hour and 47 minutes. But I cannot send the command because if you look on the top left corner, I don't have the connection. And this could be for various reasons. It could be that satellites have gone out of coverage or that this polar satellite has gone out of the coverage of my antenna. But a few minutes later or a few moments later, it's fixed. And once again, I have 15 second delay. So now I'm manually introducing the delay of one day, one hour and 28 minutes in to ensure that when I queue the experiments, they will be delayed by this amount of time. So now when I set telemetry report, magnetometer report, temperature, pressure data, all of those are delayed by one, hour, one day, one hour, 27 minutes and 44 seconds. So that means even if we lose connectivity during our maneuver, when we are at the periapsis, these experiments will fire and conserve, and conserve the data. So it will do observations regardless of our connectivity. And that, guys, is a very handy way how you can actually queue up things. So. Now we can go and enjoy as Eve, the purple temptress, becomes larger and larger in our windshield. <laughs> if there was a windshield to begin with. All right. So that being said, all right, we are coming into the Eve and oh, that's a beautiful eclipse of Eve. I just love it. Amazing shot right there. And this is the maneuver node alarm that we have set up, but we have queued up the maneuver node. And as, in, as you can tell, we have no connection once again, for whatever reason, everything is queued up. So we don't need to worry or care about it. Flight computer will take care of business when we come to it. So, yeah. All right. We are coming in to evil. I'm just trying to find the right angle at which to present things. And right now the engines will fire. Yeah, they're firing right now. Okay, great. It's going to be a long burn, two minutes and 15 seconds. And as you can tell, we are executing. So that will ensure that we basically get an orbit around Eve for this dinky little vessel. The biomes are changing and obviously we have no control over where we will be taking observations. I think the the telescope can take observations above various biomes or the gravioli. I'm not sure exactly. I think it's gravioli maybe. But like we said, we cannot time it exactly. So right now everything is being performed by the flight computer. Okay, so now we can choose to keep the experiments. And let's just say for the sake of the argument, this is being done by the onboard flight computer. There we go. Seems like we are getting orbit around Eve. Beautiful. Apoapsis is coming down. I've chosen an arbitrary periapsis so that we have still both in space high and in space low. So, and there we go. Okay, that pretty much settles it. Beautiful. I, as you can tell, I have no control over the craft at the moment and there's nothing that I can do because right now Eve is between us and the Kerbin. So we need to get out of its influence. So we will be gaining once again the connectivity. Let me just quickly get out of the way. There we go. And we have control again. So let's now make sure that we send all this wonderful science to Kerbin. I'm going to make sure that it's pointing orbit prograde and I have reset the signal delay to be zero seconds, which means only the 16 seconds default shall apply. Good. All right. 
Now, that thing being said, we need to review and send the data back to Kerbin. So, okay, let's turn off the, oh, maybe let's put it to orbit prograde just so we can get some pretty pictures. I think that would be the best, right? All right, now review data on all of them. And then we will be sending those back to Kerbin. Oh, uh, we've lost connectivity again. Uh, no comms device. Yeah, because we cannot transmit the data. Oh, bollocks. Okay, we'll have to wait for the next pass then. In that case, I can take the screeny which I've shown you at the beginning of this episode. It's beautiful, n'est-ce pas? I don't know, I really like it and I really like how Eve looks, this purple glow. I mean, it's just amazing. I really love Eve. I hate landing on it, or actually I love landing on it, I hate taking off of it. <laughs> I've only done it once, and uh, yeah, the veterans will know that Eve is the boss planet of the KSP. It's one of the hardest planets to get back from, because of its insane gravity. Okay, so now we can do review the data and send it back, because we have connectivity back to the KSC as indicated by the green marker on the remote tech sensor. Okay, so now sending everything while I'm monitoring my electric charge so it doesn't drop. There we go, sending, and the boys in the lab will have a lot of science to go through, which will be great for our advancement, so to say. It's not a lot of sensors here. I mean, it's enough, but not a, there's gonna be, not gonna be a tremendous amount of science, but at this point, I was thinking, should I be going to Gilly? Is there any po point to going to Gilly? And then I realized that the, only the alignment burn is gonna take me 852 seconds. So clearly there's a point for improvement in the future missions where I, when I get captured, I should probably aim to get captured or pass, let's say Induna pass Ike first. So yeah, I mean, this would take one almost 2000 meters per second and i don't have 2000 meters per second so yeah forget it all right good to know okay in that case what we can do we can turn off the uh turn off the computer turn on the sas and then we will be just telling the computer in the sas to use the let's say yeah something like that beautiful making sure that we are grabbing the screening for the episode. And then we'll be checking how much science exactly did we get at the KSE. 400 science. I'm happy with that. Hope you are happy with that. And with that being said, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.